If you saw my previous book video, you know that my book tastes are a little bit unconventional. Instead of focusing on pattern and instruction, I tend toward books that inspire and delight. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Building on the unconventional theme, today I made a new list of 10 books, plus a bonus at the end, that inspire me to be a better artist, maybe even a better person. Come on, let's see what made the cut. First up is a book called Quilting a Lot with a Little. It's a great little book by an author that's actually local to me here in Texas. She speaks of her journey to and through quilting through many seasons of her life. Her approach is very much like my own, working with the resources you have available, time, money, material, skill, and enjoying the process through it all. She gives her version of how she works through a quilt and cites sources for further information as well. Overall, I think it's a great little book for quilters of any level and especially for beginners or for those people who might be feeling a bit stuck, it will give you the courage to blaze your own trail. I also believe that it might be free on Kindle Unlimited right now. I'll be sure and link everything that I can below, so check those out. Next on my list is the book Color Play. I mentioned this book in the Color Cubes video and it is truly inspiring. It's a book that details how colors work and play together. This book is very technical and also exceedingly practical. It explains the concepts and principles and it shows practical examples in fabric and paintings. I've only begun to study the contents, but I know I will come back to that again and again as a resource. Next, we have Bisa Butler Portraits. I mean, come on. It is just so beautiful. Bisa Butler is an artist doing incredible work, not only in the art form itself, but also in the message and the reach. There is so much to say and so much more that needs to be seen and said and recognized and shared and felt. My sister-in-law was recently in a museum in DC and sent me this photograph. I was thrilled that Elizabeth got to see this work in person and inspired and then extraordinarily excited at the idea of being able to plan my own walking trip to Washington DC in the near future. Until now, it hadn't been possible. Next, we have Fabric of a Nation. Again, Bisa Butler on the cover. This, this is the museum book that accompanied an exhibit at MFA in Boston, one of my very favorite places on earth. We were not able to attend, but my friend Tara Miller did. She visited and has a beautiful video about the Harriet Powers quilts. I'll be certain to link that in the description box. I looked through this book and I am in complete awe. I feel inspired, connected, and overwhelmed by the work and the stories and the lives contained within the quilts in these pages. You know me, it's all about story. Taking a different turn for inspiration, next we have Nancy Crow. Nancy Crow is one of my role models. Her ability to play and explore and expand an idea is fascinating to me. Let me find my page marker. This book also, this book, guys, this book is beautiful. I checked it out from the library and it was one of those where Casey's like, um, why don't you own that book? So, you know, off I go to my Amazon used books listings. Look, guys, look. It's just incredible. So now I have a copy of my own. But this book is, this book inspires me to work differently. I'm often moving fast and always on to the next project or idea. The thought of sitting with one idea and really doing a deep dive into that to squeeze all there is out of variations of that 
squeeze all there is to learn, it really sparks my curiosity. This is not naturally how I think or work, so I'm very interested in interest so I'm very interested in seeing how these methods and ideas might inform and change my process and results. I've already got ideas brewing and my mind is reeling with possibilities. Do you do that? Do you work that way? Do you take an idea and really dig in and explore all the possibilities? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to smash that like button while you're down there. Next, similar, very similar, variations on a theme here, A Common Thread by Gwen Marston. I mean, it's Gwen Marston. What else is there to say? This is another one where one idea, take log cabins for instance, is explored and flows into the next and the next. Working in series is really pulling at my heart right now. I am really excited to dig deeper and see where it goes. Next, the next book is The Dressmakers of Auschwitz. Now, I have not yet read this, but I saw the interview that Karen Brown did with the author, and of course, it rang all my chimes regarding story, history, mystery, and connection. Quilts, and in this case, clothes, are interesting, but quilters and dressmakers and the humanity and the story, guys, that's the good stuff. That's the stuff that really, really gets me going, and I cannot wait to read it. I'll link Karen's video below as well. Okay, this one's, this one's gonna take me a minute. Quilts, <laughs> this is a hunker of a book. Quilts, A Living Tradition. I borrowed this book from the library, and again, Casey asked, um, why don't you own that? So off I go to the Amazon used listings, and now I have my own copy. But again, this book shows everything in American quilting tradition. And it has as much information as possible. I mean, it ranges from the very traditional to the very contemporary or, you know, modern. I hate that word, but less traditional quilts from other cultures, the Hawaiian quilting tradition, Native American quilts, Amish quilts, and then contemporary art quilts. It is a treasure trove, and I'll link any that I can on the used market below because, you know, you're going to have to find a place to store it because it's ginormous, but it is incredible. And finally, I have two books. The Freddie and Gwen collaborative books. Gwen Marston and Freddie Moran. Two people who I, I can't say enough good things about. But these books, these books are just, they're great. Again, they're used. I buy, bought used copies. Sometimes you can find them for a good deal. Sometimes they're a little spendy. But they're just... Guys, they're just full of color and joy and inspiration and working together. Working two people with very different sort of ideas coming together and that is freeing. That is inspiring. Like I say, they are filled with joy. I'm always motivated by two very different artists, aesthetics, blending and becoming just so much more than the sum of their parts. I'm also incredibly interested in the working habits and process of collaboration. I like to know how it all comes together and how two artists communicate and cooperate. I find that, inf I find that infinitely fascinating. Now, I promised you a bonus book, and this is one that was recommended to me in the last book, excuse me, this is one that was recommended to me in the last book video, and of course I bought it used. This is called Quilts and Coverlets, and let me get the author name for you, by Jean Ray Laurie. Now guys, it's Quilts and Coverlets, a Contemporary Approach. Guys, this book, 
This book is copyright 1970. And it is filled, now mostly it's black and white pictures, but it is filled with very modern, told you I hate that word, quilts. You know, everyone says, oh, I'm a this quilter, I'm a that quilter, I'm a... Guys, there's room for everyone. Here's a color picture. And n there's room for everyone and there's nothing new under the sun, but there is your unique voice, your unique color palette, your unique eye and way of putting things together. And that, that is what's exciting. And I just find it interesting that there are all of these quilts and quilting ideas that are not new but that are still relevant. So there it is. A quick list of 10, well, 11, 11 books that inspire and delight me right now. Mostly they inspire me to work differently and dig deeper. I loved getting all of your comments and recommendations in the last book video. Check that out here if you haven't seen it. And I am super excited to see what this inspires for you. Don't forget to let me know in the comments and never, never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.